Good afternoon. I, Father Anthony Kwan, Vice uh, Director of the Catholic Network, and also the Director of Zenchu Magazine, would like to introduce to you all the new uh, Auxilio Bishop of Melbourne, uh, Bishop uh, Vincent Long Van Nguyen. Pope Benedict XVI just appointed him two weeks ago as Auxilio Bishop in uh, Melbourne. And the whole church of Melbourne, particularly the Vietnamese uh, community in Australia and around the world, are very happy to receive this news. Uh, Bishop, what is your reaction or your feeling when you receive this news? Thank you, Father Anthony. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, I was uh, in awe at this appointment when uh, uh, it was communicated to me uh, via the Congregation for, for Bishop in the Vatican uh, because at the time I was living in Rome as uh, an assistant uh, general uh, in our order, the Conventual Franciscans. And uh, uh, I was shocked, I was uh, uh, surprised, I was uh, elated, I was uh, excited by this uh, news, but uh, at the same time um, I could not hide my preoccupations for the tremendous ministry that uh, the Holy Father Pope Benedict XVI has uh, entrusted to me. and. Uh, Immediately, uh, I went to Assisi uh, and pray at the tomb of St. Francis, my founder, to uh, ask his intercession for me so that uh, I may be a good bishop, a good Franciscan bishop, uh, one that uh, lives and witnesses the spirituality of St. Francis uh, to the people of God, especially the uh, aspect that characterizes the, the Franciscan uh, spirituality, which is uh, minority, which is uh, poverty, which is option for the poor, the least, the last, the defend, defenseless. Thank you, uh, Bishop. And uh, uh, we know that you, uh, you will be ordained as uh, the Bishop of uh, uh, Diocese of, uh, how, how to say, you will be ordained uh, as a titular Bishop of Tula. Would you like to share with us uh, where the Tula and the history of this diocese? Yes, when uh, um, my uh, announce the announcement of my appointment was made, I kind of uh, Google searched uh, the Diocese of uh, Tula, and uh, the only Tula I could find was one in Mexico, and it's a uh, present the actual diocese, not a, a non-existent diocese, not an, a historical diocese. Uh, later on, I discovered that uh, it's actually Tala, and um, uh, it is a, a diocese, an ancient uh, see uh, in Tunisia. Uh, Tunisia. Uh, we have heard a lot about these days because of the, uh, uh, the revolution, the people uh, revolution. And uh, for me, uh, this uh, appointment, which links me to the ancient uh, diocese of Tala, means that uh, we have a long history. We don't, the, the Catholic Church does not come into existence uh, uh, yesterday or last year or even last century. We've been in existence for over 2,000 years. And uh, uh, this um, titular see that the Holy Father has uh, uh, appointed me to um, means that uh, uh, I am in touch with uh, an, an ancient history, with the accumulated wisdom of the church, and uh, uh, I uh, share a particular interest in what's going on 
in Tunisia as a result. Tradition of the church and so on. Yes. And as an auxiliary bishop of Melbourne, you work very close with uh, uh, Bishop Dennis Hart. So what is your main uh, job and uh, where is your office and where do you live, uh, Bishop? Yes, thank you, Father Anthony. Well, um, since coming back to Melbourne, I've met uh, His Grace Archbishop Dennis Haas many times and spoken uh, on the phone numerous times. He has been uh, extraordinarily kind to me, solicitous towards my needs. He almost anticipated uh, what I needed uh, in terms of um, uh, my uh, Episcopal vestments, in terms of uh, my uh, living arrangements, uh, uh, in every aspect, uh, Bishop, uh, Archbishop Dennis has um, a personal interest in and has done everything to ensure a smooth uh, transition on my part into the, the uh, Archdiocese of Melbourne. Uh, in, in relation to uh, the job or jobs that I will be doing, uh, fundamentally, I'll be working in collaboration with uh, the Archbishop and his auxiliary bishops. We have uh, uh, four auxiliary bishops in Melbourne, including me, and uh, we work together as a team. Uh, and we uh, are mandated by Holy Mother Church through uh, the uh, appointment of uh, Pope Benedict XVI uh, to, to govern, to teach, and to sanctify. And therefore, uh, we endeavor to uh, lead the Church of Melbourne uh, in symphony with uh, the Universal Church led by Pope Benedict XVI. Then, uh, uh, specifically, I have been given the Western region of Melbourne as the area of my responsibility. So, the, the western uh, part of Melbourne is quite extensive. Uh, anything beyond uh, the Westgate Bridge falls under my uh, region, my responsibility. So it goes all the way down to Geelong and Anglesey. So it's possibly the, 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 the largest region of uh, the Archdiocese of Melbourne. So I have a lot to, to cover, a lot of ground to uh, to cover, I had to travel uh, in terms of confirmations, in terms of pastoral visits, mm -hmm. and uh, and so on. So um, you know, I'm looking forward to meeting the people of the West, listening to them, uh, knowing their needs, uh, identifying their, uh, their their dreams, their hopes, their struggles, and uh, and walk with them, and uh, of course. Uh, it goes without saying to be in touch with uh, the priests uh, because the priests are the primary collabor collaborators uh, of the bishop and therefore I shall endeavor to form uh, a good rapport with the priests uh, in Melbourne but especially in the western region of Melbourne so that uh, we can work together in bringing about uh, the, the church that, uh, that Christ once. Yeah. It's an advantage that you can speak uh, uh, English, uh, Vietnamese, and particularly Italian, and maybe more languages. So it's uh, very handy for uh, the parishes and for the people uh, in. Thank you, Father Anthony. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I, I was born in Vietnam, so Vietnamese is uh, my mother tongue. Uh, even though I at times do not uh, get an opportunity to speak it, uh, unless I go to my parents or to Springwell where there are a lot of Vietnamese. But for the last several years, uh, I've been living in Rome. So I picked up uh, Italian uh, there and uh, it, it has become a, a third language mm -hmm. of sort. And uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to, to be able to learn another language. And Italian, you know, is still uh, a kind of a semi-official language of, uh, of the church. So I'm very grateful for um, the opportunity to, 
to learn and to speak uh, Italian. And I look forward to uh, communicate that language with my Italian uh, parishioners in, in the West, especially. As uh, an Australian uh, bishop, uh, but originally Vietnamese, certainly uh, you, I think you will be the link between the uh, conference bishop in Australia and Vietnam. Do you think is uh, you might be the bridge between the two uh, uh, churches? And also with your influence, maybe you might uh, help or increase the freedom in Vietnam and particularly the flourish of the human rights in Vietnam for Vietnamese, for Vietnam church and also for Vietnam too. Do you think that, that yes. you play that uh, hard joke and hard <laughs> role? Thank you, Father Anthony. It's a very um, uh, big question. Uh, certainly, I would like to play a role uh, in relation to uh, the, um, uh, the, 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 the well-being and the growth of the church in Vietnam. Because I'm Vietnamese by birth, and uh, uh, in my coat of arms, the bishop's coat of arms, I put the, uh, the flag, the Vietnamese flag, within the, the Australian flag. Mm -hmm. uh, my intention is to show that uh, Vietnamese is my heritage, and it's a very important part of who I am. Uh, and therefore, I would like to, uh, to work for the good of the church, in Vietnam uh, through my role as, uh, as a bishop. Uh, you know, the bishops of Vietnam uh, are living in very different uh, and difficult situation. Uh, you know, we can say what we want in Australia uh, without having that fear of being uh, arrested or being uh, persecuted or being uh, uh, frowned upon. Uh, we live in a free country, but uh, the bishops of Vietnam in particular, and the priests too, religious too, they have uh, a very sensitive situation to contend with. So I don't want to um, kind of um, uh, lecture or to uh, impose my own views uh, without respecting the local uh, environment in Vietnam. However, I would say this in relation to the church in Vietnam as the church anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. that sometimes uh, the church has to act out its prophetic function. Mm -hmm. uh, prophetic means uh, to, uh, to critique uh, the society, to, uh, to critique the culture in which the church lives, and to uh, enable the culture to be uh, in the best uh, way possible. And uh, uh, that prophetic role can be very difficult to exercise, you know, when it comes to uh, this issue of uh, human rights, of uh, uh, you know the universal values of uh, of uh, of freedom, of tolerance, uh, and and so on. And um, I believe that uh, uh, you know the, the church in Vietnam, uh, through its higher hierarchy, its uh, bishops and and also its priests to, to walk with the people and to uh, help the people to achieve uh, what God intends for them in terms of the fullness of life because Christ came not just to um, enable us to go to heaven 
But Christ came so that we have life and have yes. to the full. And so, Does mean to bring in the Christian values. Yeah, the Christian values, the human values, the human values. Uh, uh, in in a society. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, a, as a bishop, uh, I I shall endeavour mm -hmm. to bring these concerns to the fore, uh, so that the church in Vietnam and the people in Vietnam will uh, be able to live in a in a better environment and uh, be able to um, to live their faith without uh, the harassment, the 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 the, um, uh, the, the, the difficulties yeah. that, that they have to deal with. Thank you, Bishop. And uh, as a Vietnamese Bishop, uh, we, as a priest, uh, religious, and uh, the Vietnamese uh, Catholic, uh, look at you. Uh, and uh, very happy as uh, you to become uh, the leaders. So, uh, uh, would you like to share something uh, to, or you would like to say a few words to the whole Vietnamese uh, in Australia and particularly the Vietnamese uh, priests, uh, religious uh, in Melbourne? Yes, thank you, Father Anthony. I think it's a very interesting question. Uh, I believe that. Uh, this appointment uh, isn't simply a personal um, honor. Uh, it's not just about myself. Uh, I believe that uh, this appointment uh, has um, meaning beyond, uh, beyond the individual uh, person who has been selected. Uh, in this case, uh, I believe that the Holy Father uh, wanted to, uh, to show a sign of love and care for the Catholic people in Australia. And in a particular way, the, the migrants, the refugees who come to live in this land. Uh, because I am a refugee myself, I am a migrant myself. Um, so, um, as I see it, my appointment is a, a, a recognition of the church's concern for the migrants, for the refugees uh, in Australia in particular. And uh, I would say this too, that um, uh, you know, the Vietnamese Catholic people, wherever they are, they bring their, uh, their, their particular way of living the faith, their vitality, their vibrancy, their, uh, their tradition, their piety. And, and whatever parish that has the Vietnamese Catholics in it, that parish comes alive. You know, that parish uh, is um, all the better because of the presence of the Vietnamese Catholics. So I believe that my appointment is also a recognition of the faith, mm -hmm. the piety, um, the, 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 the liveliness of the, the, of the faith of the Vietnamese mm -hmm. Catholic people. And so it's a re recognition mm -hmm. of their faith. Uh, and and the, the faith has, which has been uh, put to the test. Yeah. You know, we, uh, we look if we look back in our history, our recent history in particular, you know, we've had wars, we've had, uh, uh, the, uh, we have, we've had communism, we've had um, uh, the phenomenon of the boat people. Uh, you know, the Vietnamese people uh, have suffered much, yeah. but their faith, far from being lost yeah. or diluted, their faith has been proven like gold. Mm -hmm. Their faith has been strengthened. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a tremendous asset for the universal church, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I think that a church in Australia is so much uh, livelier as a result of the Vietnamese people, Catholic people here. And so I, I firmly believe that I, I share this um, honor with my people, yeah. with the Catholic um, yeah. Vietnamese, but also with the Vietnamese 
people in general, because they too uh, struggle, they too um, overcame tremendous uh, odds in order to uh, to flourish yes. in a new country. Yes, uh, as uh, I said, that we are very proud uh, to receive this news, and also we are very grateful to uh, His Holiness Pope Benedict, and also to uh, His Christ uh, Archbishop Dennis Hart, mm. uh, and also to the Church in Melbourne. And I think your appointment is uh, like you said that uh, not uh, it's an honor not only for you but uh, for. Uh, the home Vietnamese community, and we are very proud about it. I can see that uh, your role is uh, you got a, a very big job and big uh, heavy job <laughs> for the future. So uh, thank you for this uh, interview, and uh, we uh, pray for you. And also we ask the Holy, we pray that Holy Spirit inspire you and mm. lead you in your new role. Uh, thank you, uh, Bishop. Thank you, Father Anthony. And I also I ask, uh, especially the, the Catholic uh, people who might uh, listen to this uh, interview, to um, uh, show their solidarity with me uh, through their uh, prayerful support. And uh, uh, also, uh, we look at this as a milestone of our, um, our settlement in Australia uh, because, as I said, it's not a personal honour only. It is a recognition of uh, the faith which has been tested and proven uh, uh, a tremendous asset for, for Australia uh, and for the Catholic Church in Australia in particular.